daughter. I know I haven't ridden in a while. But the neighbor's little girl brought us a loaf of bread this morning, and it reminded me of something. Do you remember that day you decided to help your mother make dinner? You could have been more than five. Your mother was next door visiting the neighbors when you decided it was dinner time. It's a wonder you didn't burn the house down cooking that bread. I got home just in time to see you sitting in the center of the room, covered in flour, pulling a perfectly loaf of bread out of the oven. And that wouldn't be the last time you astounded your dear Papa. Dear Papa, your grandson's taking a nap, and my better half is at the shop. He always seems to be at the shop since his skills are in such high demand. But I thought I would take a moment to write. I think of you every day about this time. It's when you always came home for lunch. I remember running at you full tilt when you came through the door, calling out, where's my little girl? My little girl. is quite a good cook, I would tell people. I was always so eager to talk about you and to describe just how smart and hardworking you were. We used to be so close. You were your daddy's girl for so long. That's why I don't understand how you could let this happen. When I looked towards your future, I had such high hopes. I had such high hopes when the messenger came with a letter from home. But no, still just mama's name at hand. I've kept every letter you two have ever written me. I wish you would write more and not make mama do it all. But I guess that's part of what happens when your father is convinced you've disgraced our family name. Our family name has taken quite a hit by what I now think of as your situation. I can barely show my face at the synagogue. I think I would be better if you had at least just admitted that you had done something wrong. And that husband of yours, I refuse to call him my son-in-law. He had us fooled. Seemed like a man with potential, a future. But now he's fallen in line with you, your ridiculous story, and I can't imagine why. I can't imagine why you think I would have lied about this. Don't you think I know how ridiculous it sounds? Of course I do. I don't blame you for having doubts, but to flat out accuse me of lying? I thought you respected me more than that. Of all the childish things I may have done, I never once lied to either you or mother. I know Mama has her doubts as well, but at least she's doing as I asked and waiting it out. Why can't you? Why can't you see the things through my eyes? I've told your mother that this is the time for tough love. We can't let you get away with these outrageous stories and plan us for fools. If you want to live as an adult, we must hold you to adult standards and not accept this kind of foolishness. Foolishness? That's what you called it. You looked right in my eyes and called it foolishness. That's what bothers me most, I think. What bothers me most, I think, is I think you're fooling yourself. When I looked into your eyes, I didn't see deception, fear, some confusion, something that resembled excitement, but no deception. Have you really convinced yourself that this is true? This is true. I know it is. No matter who doubts me, you I gave birth, birth to, to the Messiah. Messiah. My daughter? Me. No. The Messiah would not have been brought into the world this way. It was unexpected, but it's, it's thrilling, it's, it's exciting, it's, it's amazing, it's, it's astounding, and, and terrifying. I'm frightened. Mary? Papa, come visit and look in my eyes again. You have to know that I would not invent a story like this. If it is true. It is true, Papa. If it is true, then nothing is as we have expected. Nothing is as we have planned. I, I can't explain it, Papa. I can't tell you how it will all work out, but this changes everything. It does, Papa. The God you have served so faithfully all your life is doing a new thing. And you get a front row seat. I don't want you to miss it. But if the Messiah is not a conqueror, if that is different, 
And I have a suspicion that the road will not be an easy one for you or your child. I know that it won't be easy, Papa. But Joseph is beside me, and God is leading us. Joseph, he really does believe you, doesn't he? He does, Papa. He has an advantage, though. God sent an angel to him, too. Lord, could you have done the same thing for me? Papa. Potter. Don't miss out. You've prayed all your life for a Messiah. You taught me to expect the unexpected from the God of our fathers. You've instructed me in the faith of our fathers. All I'm asking is that you look to the heavens and ask for God to give you faith in this plan you weren't expecting. Trust me. My daughter, the mother of the Messiah, can it really be true? Yes, Papa. Miss Mary. We've had plenty of guests since the baby came, shepherds and some very wise men from far away even. I've had lots to ponder and Joseph has been so wonderful. But Papa, I want you to see him, our little baby Jesus. Jesus? You named the baby God saves? Yes, Papa. It's the name the angels gave us. Jesus, my daughter's baby? Yes, Papa. Jesus the Messiah? Yes, Papa. So I suppose I must accept that after all these prayers and all these years, Papa, we should be celebrating because God, God is with us. us. With all my love. And you. Your devoted daughter. Anna, gather your things. We're going to see our friends. Joseph, you're home just in time. Mama and Papa are coming to visit. <laughs> 